So this video here is to show you how to find the data that you try to report on. This does not supplement Workday Report Writer training. You need to know how to use Workday Report Writer before this will make a lot of sense. What this video shows you is once you know how to use the tool, how to get the data on a report that you're looking to do. This first video is just going to look at data that we get from the worker object. So um, clearly our most famous object in Workday is the worker object. It has tons of information. Now, how do we access the worker object to get data on the object into a report? Of course, it's via data sources. The data source that you should be using is workers for HCM reporting. That should be your 90% um, 90% of the time you should be using this data source. This data source gives you data on the worker object as of the date that the report is run. So the effective date is the report run date. If you're trying to find out what data is on a worker, is um, data on a worker as of a past date, for example, give me the job profile that was on the worker at the beginning of the year, you need to use an effective data source. Now the one you should be using your go-to one thereafter is all workers. So that'll allow you to effective date your report and get data as of an effective date. All workers only includes active workers. It also contains future workers. It does not contain terminated workers. If you want to also include terminated workers in your report, you should be using all active and terminated workers. But essentially, as you see over here, it should be the last data source that you're using for reporting uh, on data on a worker. All right, now that we've decided we're going to use workers space in reporting, we know that it's um, access the primary business object worker. And of this primary business object worker, there is a lot of data that you can report on. Now, for example, job profile. Now, if you want to have a look at what's available, obviously you go with um, business object detail, details. And here you have 30, now, 3,738 fields, so a lot of fields that you can report on. Um, for example, yeah, you can see the job profile uh, on a worker. So now, if I have a report here, you see I did the right thing, uh, using the data source to work as for HCM reporting. It's on the primary business object of worker. Um, I brought in worker and worker as the first field. Please do that, um, it allows you to link to the worker object. And now I brought in um, position. But what I've done, obviously, in addition, is I've used position, um, because it's a related business object in an advanced report, I can also bring position in, and I can get in, for example, the job description that's on the position. So not only can you access data that's on worker, for example, position, you can also add access data that's on position, for example, job description. Now here I have my report. Um, it's got, shows me worker, uh, run a term for worker, Chosen the position as controller, and here I have the job description um, of that position. So far, so good, so easy. Now, as it, there's a lot of these objects uh, on the worker, 3,000 plus, that you can report on. There is another set of objects that are generally multi instance uh, related business objects that contain important data that you want about a worker. For example, very often you have to access the compensation detail on a worker. For example, what compensation plans um, does a worker have? Um, so the way to join um, the, the link between the worker object and this compensation plan assignment snapshot, which is the object that contains a snapshot of all compensation plans assigned to a worker, is via this compensation plans with employee details. Um, let's call it link. Um, you see that, obviously, when you go to related business objects and you filter for this business object's compensation plan assignment snapshot, the way to get there, the links, you see it over here. And so there's obviously a number of links. You should use the link that's obviously most specific to what you're trying to do. Uh, for example, allowance plans, um, bonus plans, uh, etc. Right? I've just used the generic one, uh, compensation plans with employee details. And um, as again, um, that's the, for generic purposes, I do encourage to use more specific ones. It'll really it'll increase your report performance. Now, in my report, 
I have this decided, I want to bring in the data about the employee, given, I want to have a look at the employee's bonus plan. So I created this extract multi-instance calculated field. And you know all about creating calculated field from your standard workday course that you took. And so it's an extract multi-instance, it's based on the worker business object. It's using this field compensation plans with employee details. Um, and it's bringing back all the, it's an extract multi instances. So all ex instances where this condition is true. And I'm looking here for um, um, bonuses. So I'm bringing back all compensation plans um, where uh, the compensation plan type is bonus. So when I run my report, I can see that Megan has this bonus plan. Um, on, well, he's assigned this bonus plan. So there is how you report on, obviously this is an extract multi instance. Very often you do extract single instance. Uh, you can use those combinations. Now the next really uh, big object we report on a lot is benefit elections. Um, so you probably want to see what benefit elections are on a worker. So you access it by the link current benefit elections. And now looking at my report, I've just flat out used it. Yeah? So I'm just using this multi-instance related business object to show me all current benefit elections. When I look at the report result, here I see all the current benefit elections uh, of Megan. So that's your benefit elections object used often. You might have come across a weird object called employee. Well, it's basically worker. Um, plus more information on it. So employee is a different object. It's, uh, it's super imposed on top of worker. In other words, it's got all the fields in worker, but it has additional objects. Uh, it's often used in talent management. So that is employee. Other data often report on is time off. So for a worker, you want to see what time off have they taken. And the way to travel from worker to time off is via time off completed details. There are other routes, you know that. Um, you can go into your business object. Since the work that keeps changing its objects, it's very always good uh, just to keep an eye on what's going on here and not just to use, for example, a plan like this. But now I can do my time off entry. Um, time of entry. And then I can filter on that. And I see there are a number of lengths there too. So um, I have taken a time of completed details. In my report, I've added a field. I've decided I want to add up all the vacation hours that the employee has taken. So here I'm now using, of course, a summer related instance a calculated field. And I am adding up this option worker object. I'm going to base on so using the time of complete details to link me to the time of entries. And I'm adding up everything where this condition is true. And that's basically where uh, the time type is vacation. Now, when I run the report for worker, I can get oops, um, that the vacation hours is um, 200, right? What I could have also done is put a, enhance this true false condition, put um, you know the date of the time off, and then say greater than or equal to a start date and less than or equal to an end date progress, but you of course can add. Right, so that is your your time off. Then same thing for time blocks, right? So you can access the time blocks for workers, so that's where worker uh, enters time specifically if they're working, if they if they time entry employee, uh, for example, consultants are always entering uh, time time in entries, and you can then use it to figure out the amount of hours that a consultant has booked to a particular project. Um, you'd again use the sum of related instances and, and access the time block object that way and add up all you know where project type is something. The other um, leave of absence request, there is also a link to a leave of absence. Uh, sometimes uh, I think uh, this, is, this is used at times too. Now going around the clock, gets in getting us to the biggest object around him is all 
most of the data on worker is updated by a business processor. Now, business process is a fairly complicated object. Um, however, for everything that happens on a worker object, if you're trying to access that, staffing event should be your first go-to object, right? So via staffing history approved. For example, you want to find out when last has a worker had a change of job. Now, that change of job data is contained in staffing event. It will basically show you um, uh, wherever, and I'll show you how, how we do that, right? But um, that's where the change of job can. This data is also available on worker business process. However, um, worker business process contains more than just staffing events. So you should use the object uh, that has, uh, that is the most focused. Uh, it's going to increase the runtime of your reporting. So if you find, if you want to find a specific data, first see if you can get on staffing event via staffing history approved. If not, then go to worker business processes by worker events completed. If you still don't get it, you go to worker history via the action event, which is the basis. Yeah? So staffing event has all the data for worker business processes and action event, and worker business process has all the data from action events. These are super stacked. I don't know what the raw term is, but they stack objects. So uh, in my case, I, as I said, I wanted to find out when last has a worker had a change of job. So if I look at um, my report definition, I have created an extract single instance because you know, obviously there's multiple instances of change of job or start multiple staffing events. So it's extract a single instance on the worker object where I'm going by a staffing history proof. In other words, it's happened, uh, gets me to the staffing event object and I'm returning all instances where is, there is a change of job. So the, how to determine where there's a change of job is a true false calculated field on staffing event where I say, um, show me every, oh, true condition is where the job profile current does not equal the proposed. In other words, there's been a change, right? So this indicates a change of job. And so I can go back here, I've filtered it by effective date. And then uh, I sort of descending pick the first occurrence. In other words, this gives me the last uh, job change staffing event. So I have that um, back on in my report, so this will give me the staffing event. And now if I want to get something specific of that staffing event, for example, when was the date, when it actually happened? What I do very easily is uh, on top of that, I create a lookup related value on that calculated field that gives me the last job change staffing event, and I bring back the effective date. So now when I look at my report, here's a bunch of calculated fields. Um, here I get for Megan the last time this was the staffing event, and it uh, the effective date was the first uh, the uh, the first of uh, of in first of May uh, twenty seventeen. Okay, had a quickly count of my months there. So that really gets us pretty much around the clock. Um, as you see, now you've accessed a lot of data. Right? in this going around the clock. You've accessed data on the worker object, I mean, job profile N, here's 2,000 other fields you can use. You've also accessed uh, objects where there's compensation details, where there's benefit elections, where there are time of entries for the sum of related instances. Uh, we also accessed, um, we had, where well, you could also access the time block, you know, leave request events, and stopping events as we discussed. Now, just for some time, you should not always go by a work time. If your reporting requirement is to um, show all staffing events that, um, that all, all job change staffing events, you should really use the data source completed staffing events for HCM reporting that goes straight into the staffing event yeah? and then we'll list all the staffing events um, that have had of, of type job change. Now, there I have a report in this have this report here that's um, as you see it's using the data says completed staffing events for HCM reporting it's on staffing event and here I'm now bringing in the worker business process uh, the worker the process type the, and the job profile current and proposed remember that's how I determined there was actual change so when I run this um, I have a filter over here 
interesting, I uh, need to just determine that as well. I have used the data source filter um, staffing events for organization. The great thing about that, of course, is in your HC, so on it, it gives me a prompt for organizations. So I can run it. Great. I mean, this kind of reporting is is probably aggregate reporting for an organization. You really ought to be doing analytics at this stage. In other words, not using an advanced report, but a metric report. Either which way, I have um, for Megan determined that I am looking for all um, job uh, or, or, or staffing events that are between um, for these organizations, right? These are supervisory organizations between these days. So when I run that now, I actually get happen to get Megan then. So this job change, you see, was not done, done by a job change business process, right? Which would have been your default way of determining, hey, you know, when did Megan get a job change, right? Remember, I went, I did this by a true false condition where I said, hey, show me where it's changed. You know? um, this is actually a job change because it could become with any business process, right? If you'd taken job change, you would have not gotten this one, right? It actually has occurred with this transfer employee inbound um, uh, business process type. All righty, so that gets us pretty much around the clock over here reporting on, on these various objects. What you've seen though is a, a couple of, of governance things, things that you should be doing um, to make sure your reporting is effective. One, Always use the data sources that are indexed. Yeah? So these are two indexed data sources, workers space in reporting and this complete the staffing events. Yeah? Um, use, use, very, use the most effective data sources and there's a lot of choices that use all active and terminated rates. The other thing we talked about is when you access data from work on other objects where there is, for example, a worker business process, you have the staffing events as well, but it has more. Um, and hence, first go to staffing events to find the information Pick the short, smallest object to get the best, um, uh, to get the maximum performance. And the other thing that you have seen uh, in each of these reports when you run them, you always, uh, we always put on here as for you to be able to save these filters. I think that's very important to always be doing. And then what you've seen as well is we use DCF um, as the naming convention for um, our calculated fields. Basically what this means, if I do a search on worker objects for all bonus, for bonus planes, this is gonna to sort to the bottom of the list, which is what you want, right? If you do CF, you will hit a lot of results, you scroll through and then you hit your Cs, right? And there's all these calculated fields. All right, well, I hope this video helps you to get started. As I said, this is a start, your real help. This is a starter help, your real help is this, going on the object, understanding the fields that are available, Understanding the related business objects, understanding how to get there, there, and obviously then understanding the data sources that enable you to access that object to do reporting. Right? Do not use all active and terminated workers. Yeah? Use um, workers' face in reporting.